We've got uh, the trade conditions survey showing activity dipped into negative territory. We're looking at uh, 47 points in June as opposed to the 50 in May. This has been a pretty up and down gauge though, hasn't it? I mean, ever since we had that 55 point level being hit in February this year. Correct. Uh, when one looks at the survey on an unadjusted basis without the seasonal adjustment in place, you do see volatility mm -hmm. from month to month. So it's been 50, then 47, then 50, then 47. So that's not very promising in terms of a future outlook. Um, in addition, uh, unfortunately, when you do, when you um, look at the seasonally adjusted, the, the, the data that's not seasonally adjusted, then it's um, it's a, a worse picture, I'm afraid. It's more worrying because in that context, we're looking at a weakening trend. Correct. Yes. So unseasonally, uh, sorry, seasonally adjusted, it's a fairly volatile trend. Without seasonal adjustment, it's a declining trend on a consistent basis mm -hmm. uh, since March. So it, it all hasn't been good in terms of current trade conditions. The factor that really stands out or uh, one of the factors that really stands out in this regard is sales volumes. That's been severely knocked back uh, from May. We're looking at uh, you know a status of 56 points in May and we're sitting at 50 right now. Just uh, how are you reading that at this stage? Yep. Sales volumes, one of the more important components of the survey, uh, fairly negative right now, uh, improved in May, but receded once again. Of course, one has to again be reminded that April was a month of low activity in the survey, and May wasn't as substantial a recovery as one would hope. Mm -hmm. And that is why we find ourselves in negative territory again in June. The positive momentum couldn't be sustained, and the sales volume performance is particularly indicative of that, where the May data can probably be viewed as a temporary spike, more of a recovery or partial recovery from April than a sustainable trend towards improved sales volumes. What's interesting as well is that if you're looking at uh, selling prices and input prices, they've uh, you know dipped back. And I say a surprise because this in a context where we've got inflation on the rise, having hit 4.6% uh, last month. Uh, so how, how do we see the correlation here? How does this make sense? This is just within the trade environment and within the trade environment the indications have been for the last few months that conditions are very tight mm -hmm. and that is the reason why inflationary pressures are being contained. But that being said, in the overall economy, inflationary pressures are building. And that is why when you look at the trade expectations index, which looks six months into the future, you then see that inflationary impact starting to creep through. But on a very low, very contained basis, given that this environment, this component of our economy is struggling to gain momentum. Expectations also of taking into account the fact that we've got ongoing labor uh, issues that persist, strike action currently underway. And and the kind of wage demands we're seeing being put on the table uh, really would then filter through to those input costs from here on out. Quite right. Um, if you look at the employment component of the survey, it's performing fairly poorly. Uh, in, current, in the current circumstance, uh, it's declined by one point, but it's well into negative territory right now. When one looks six months into the future, it's on the border between positive and negative, that being 50 in terms of this index. And we expect that it will drop back into negative territory once the survey takes into account the performance or behavior of labor in July. One must remember that this survey is looking yeah. at June before the indications came out that there would be this level of strike activity. So the market at this stage shouldn't get too excited about the fact that we've got trade expectations and that index showing employment rising uh, to 50 points. Correct. It's only one point that it improved. So it's not, it's, it wasn't something hugely exciting to start with and now it will definitely recede substantially once we take into account the current strikes, uh, the impact of those strikes on the cost structures of business, uh, especially when uh, you look at an environment that's already under enormous pressure, mm -hmm. like the trade environment is, and given that this is a survey, it's likely to be substantially impacted by negative sentiment. It's unlike our business confidence index where we just look at technical data. A survey is more vulnerable to negative sentiment and that is what we're likely to see creep in in the next round in a substantial note. 
and that will obviously have a consequence for the overall numbers that we're seeing, uh, not just the employment component, but the final number that we see in terms of trade activity as well as in terms of trade expectations. And it just illustrates how far off sentiment can be because if you're looking at uh, the trade expectations index on all levels or most levels here, it's looking at significant improvement. I mean, sales volumes uh, coming back, yes, but looking at new orders, expectations are, uh, you know, that we would see a maintaining of a level above 50 and uh, that not necessarily going to be reflected in uh, the actual survey results. Correct. Um, the, the components of the survey tend to vary substantially mm -hmm. and some of them suffer from a high base effect rather than a low base effect. So they, they, uh, moderation comes uh, gradually over time and there have, may have been particular factors that have driven them to unreasonably high numbers in the past. So we tend not to dwell too much on the individual components, but rather the final number. Where the individual components are more telling is in terms of inflationary pressures and overall trends. Um, but right now, we, we are in the expectations component, uh, still looking at fairly high numbers, uh, some of them uh, above 60, um, the sales volumes uh, until recently above 70. So the, the trend is more important than the actual number, I'm afraid. To what extent uh, is the fact that we've had, for the most part, interest rate hike expectations uh, pushed out towards the first quarter of uh, next year playing an effect here? Um, I think that that is not substantially an impacting factor here because it's a constrained environment. So the businesses here are focusing on keeping their doors open, remaining buoyant. Um, the expectation of an interest rate hike so far into the future uh, will tend not to affect the current circumstance. I think there's a lot of optimism, a lot of hope being built in that the latter portion of 2011 and early 2012 brings in better times. Yeah. So the, I think businesses have to look at it optimistically and hope that they contain, can contain those high interest rate levels when they do come. Right now, I think they're very satisfied and very appreciative of the fact that the interest rate levels do uh, are currently contained. Because ultimately it means there's also more in the pockets of the consumer to spend from here on out. Absolutely, um, especially in the trade environment, one sees the multi-pronged impact of lower interest rates very clearly. You see it in terms of the debt relief, or the, debt, the lower debt service burden that these businesses are experiencing, and you see it in terms of higher consumer activity. And both of those factors impact on these businesses very rapidly. It's not a long, longer turnaround as some sees in other areas of the economy. It's a very rapid impact on this sector and a very direct impact on their business. But unfortunately, it's a fairly negative picture right now and the outlook for six months into the future has also receded um, into, the, into the 50s after maintaining a level of 60 plus for all of 2011 to date. And we hope that that 56 that we've recorded in June is a temporary setback and that the outlook remains positive uh, in the future.